Hey everyone, welcome to this episode on how you can use your stylus and the audio feature in your class notebook to provide feedback. Okie dokie, let's have a look at this. So I'm actually going to be using a different OneNote for this, but what you are looking at is our shared one, which you can access below this video by clicking on the link. But if you are looking for the resource of what we're doing today, it is here in the how to under ribbons and then in audio, and you're looking for this guy here. Apart from that, let's jump over. I need a class notebook for this example today. So I have my task here ready to go. Now, first things first. So I said, we're gonna use the stylus and we're gonna use the audio feature. If you're not familiar with them, what I mean here is in draw is that I can come into draw and pick something up like a highlighter. Okay, and I can use my stylus pen and I can highlight on the page. And then what I mean by audio, I'm gonna click right out here to the far right, just so it's out of my way. I'm going to go insert and then I'm going to click audio. And what that is now doing is now recording everything I'm saying. So it's audio feedback. So two different means of feedback. So kind of your stylus or kind of handwritten on the screen or audio as well. The point of today's though is to look at how we can actually combine the two of these together. Now, before we start, one thing um, I like to show as a quick little tip is if you uh, plan on using audio or this what, or this combination that I'm going to show you today is find a place before you distribute to that you want the file, the audio file to go, because otherwise it kind of pushes and moves things around. So all I do here is I go insert and I go table. I take a one by two over here is fine. And then I'm going to write feedback there we go you know if i even wanted to i can come in here i can go to you know tables maybe i'll pick a green color because my feedback is green i'm not sure it's totally up to you but it's nice to find a space and you can obviously make that look a lot prettier but what we're going to do today is i'm going to provide you know a very quick example here of feedback on this um, persuasive text but I'm going to talk and mark up the page at the same time, but I'm only going to talk. So there will be a couple of moments of silence where I need to provide feedback. Otherwise I'm basically keeping quiet and reading the work in my head. So let's have a go. So first things first. So I've got my little box. I'm going to click here because this here is where I want the file to live. I'm going to go insert and then I'm going to click audio. And then I'm gonna go get the, my marker to make sure I've got the right one. And then I'm gonna start. So audio. So from here, this is not what I'd normally um, be saying, but if I click record, you can see the recording has started. So I'm gonna look through the work. And when I see something that I need to provide feedback on, I'm going to mark up the page and talk about it. So you, where you've used the word 100 things, maybe we could use something more like hundreds of things instead. Let's try not to use the word stuff. Maybe we could elaborate a little bit more further on this. I think we need to have a, another look at this sentence. It probably needs a little bit of a restructure. Looks like we have a little bit of a spelling mistake there. If we could go back and have a look at what we can fix that up, I think we might be missing an A. And then I'm going to stop. So that went for about a minute. Your feedback might be shorter, it might be longer. I kind of just breathe through this quite quickly. So here's my file and I could hit play on this file and let's listen. But... So from here, so we kind of get the general idea that, you know, if I'm doing audio feedback, it's just going to play right from the start here up to 10 seconds. And it's going to go through to a minute, six seconds. However, because we've made these markups or these highlighted sections on the page, what we'll notice, and they are a little bit faint to see, but there are actually these little 
play buttons right next to them. So if I just, um, let's hypothetically, let's say we go to this one here. What we want to do is we want to look at the time here and at the top there that says 10 seconds. But when I click play here, that's going to change. So let's click play. This. I think we need to have a, another look. So what's happened is, you know, it hasn't got it exact right. You've got to, you know, like me, you got to get a bit better at that. Um, <clears throat> when to hit the screen and when to talk um, motion. But in general here, we were at 10 seconds and we've jumped up to nearly, you know, 49 seconds. And what that means is that the audio has jumped straight to what you were saying when you highlighted that part of that section. Now, that's pretty much it for the feedback with the pen and audio. One thing I do like to show is how do you save this feedback? Because quite often, you know, if I was a student, I would come in here and I'd go, oh, I'd listen to that feedback. Oh, thanks, you know, sir, that's great. You know, um, uh, you know spelling mistake fixed, you know, done. But I've, as a teacher, I've lost all evidence of any audio feedback that I have given. So that might be something that I'm, you know, I, I want to keep. So what I normally do is I teach people this structure. So what we want to do is typically if you were doing this style of feedback, you'd be using the class notebook feature for reviewing student work, which is we're going to have a look at in a second. But let's just say I clicked on this student's page. I clicked through the list. I'm, you know, I'm at the first student. And what I will do is that when I'm finished, I'm just going to copy and then I'm going to paste that work in. Okay. Now what that means is there are two copies now. So I'm clicking on both. You can't see any changes being made. Maybe if I scroll down, you'll see, oh, there we go. The changes there, they are exactly the same thing. And the feedback is exactly the same, but I want to keep a copy for me in my students section that they can't change. So I kick, click on class notebook at the top here. Then we go to review student work. Click on this one. Let's just get me out of the way there. We're going to go to house term one because that's where it's located in the student sections. And then here it is here because this one will appear because it's the one that I've distributed. Okay. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to go next and I'm going to click here on page locking. So I would select all of my students and click on apply. Now what's going to happen here for my student is that they can see this one. Okay. They're not really going to use it. It's more for me, but they can't make any changes to it. But this one here, I haven't locked because it's just a copy of it. So my student, you know, they might actually come in here and they might change the name. They might call it final. And then they might actually do what we were saying before, come back here, you know, fix up the mistakes based on listening to that feedback as we go. Um, but the original copy there is always going to stay and it's always going to be locked for you. All right, guys, I hope you like that feature and we will see you again soon. Bye. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And to keep up to date, don't forget to follow us. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comment section. Cheers.